Hi guys and welcome back to Skill Studio. Today we're going to be turning this into this. So sit back, relax, and let's get going. To start off, I'm going to glue all of the interleaving road wheels together so that I can take them off as one piece, which will make it a lot easier to paint and also just to keep together and not lose any parts. You can see that I did accidentally break off a couple torsion bar arms, but that can be easily fixed because of the stumps on the end will actually hold them in place and then you just need to make sure it's flat. So you can see that I'm going to use some thicker super glue to make sure it spans the gap and makes it solid in there. And after 24 hours you can pull the tracks off, uh, the road wheels off, excuse me, as one piece. Next we're going to put the side skirts on so I can draw a straight edge for the new side skirts we're going to attach. Then I'm going to use some soda can to start building each side skirt. The dimensions were 35 centimeters by 9 for mine, but I would make sure to measure my, yours um, as they could be a little bit different, although I think that should be standard for most 135th tanks. Now you can see that I'm using a ruler and a razor blade to just start putting those bends in there. Each skirt has a top one millimeter bend for attaching it to the hole and then one lower bend. I'm not sure what it's for and sometimes it's not on the tank, but I think it adds a little bit of detail and I've seen it on some. So I decided to put it in anyways. It's a little harder because it's a very small piece, but if you work at it for a little while, you can definitely get it done. I'm now going to attach them to the sides of the hole with super glue using that line that I already drew to make sure that they were straight. Don't be afraid to rework them a little bit with your razor blade if they don't fit the first time. Uh, it's all about trial and error before you can get it right. Then just make sure it's sitting flat by tapping it in with a uh, flat object. After that, I decided to put a little bit of battle damage on one. So I took my sharp side cutters and literally just started hacking at the end of it like it was blown off or something and made a mental note to put a HE cell uh, impact there just to make sure it kind of made sense that it was blown off and kind of gave me an excuse to damage this thing crazy. So these will also be super fun because I can use a ton of different weathering and rust products on them to just keep giving it more of a damaged look. Next, I'm going to be using the end of a drill bit or something, an eraser and a piece of tin foil, and actually just pushing the drill bit through to create these little rivets. Then you just attach them with super glue, and they look like little bolt heads or something. Next, I used a one millimeter drill bit to drill out the bolt holes, just to make it a little bit more cohesive. The track removing wire or cable really was bad in this kit, so I decided to take just the brackets and put them on, so it looked like it was missing. I think this makes it uh, a unique build and a little bit more interesting. Then I'm gonna take a hypodermic needle and punch it through both sides of the light fixture so that I can get the headlight wire in. Then all you have to do is cut it to length and bend it to shape.
After that, I installed wire grab handles on the engine deck cover, making sure that they were even with the other ones I already put on, just so they don't look crooked or anything. And then I put this piece on. I don't know what it is, but uh, Night Shift put two holes in the top corners there. So I decided that I might as well do the same as it makes it look more detailed and they weren't there, so why not? Now we're going to start work on the photo etch grates on the back. These are pretty easy, you just make sure that they're square on the frames that they have and just super glue them in place. Now they look pretty boring as they are and so I decided to battle damage them a little bit. I just took my sharp side cutters and as you'll see in a second here, I just poked through uh, the mesh with them and dented it up like it was damaged by uh, shrapnel or something like that. You can see it in pictures of the walk around of the Tiger 131 at the British Tank Museum. So as you can see I'm just kind of denting each one in and then shearing some straight through and it just adds a little bit of detail to it. You can clip the individual wires of the mesh but I find that pushing it works just as well. Now I'm going to start working on the exhausts. These had a lot of problems because there's a massive, really thick seam line on it. And so it takes five or 10 minutes of sanding just to get it acceptable. And then you have to work on the rest of it, which is subpar. To start off, I'm going to cut the super thick bolt heads off the top of this. And you'll see why in a minute. Now I'm going to pierce each hole on the bottom through with a hydrodermic uh, needle and then widen them with the X-Acto knife. After that, I took a straightened piece of wire, stuck it into the first one there, made sure it was level with it, and then installed it on the top here after making sure it was the same length as the ones I'd built before. Now I let that one set and then installed the other pieces of wire, which I left a little bit long. Then I just have to make sure it's level and glue it in place. Now you can see I cut them off and it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add those same aluminum foil rivets as before. I'm super happy with the way these look. Now I'm going to start denting up the back turret box or bustle or no, it's not a bustle, it's a box. And what you do is you dremel out the inside, make sure that you can see light through it. Once you feel like you have a thin enough layer, make sure you don't melt through because that can be a problem as well. Cut off the melted plastic. And then on this side, all you're going to do is start a hole with your X-Acto knife where you want it. And then poke it through with whatever you have on hand. I'm using a toothpick. It's that easy. And then I'm going to poke a second one right below it, just to add some interest. Now you can see that I did have to fill that line there. It's a big problem. Now we're going to start on the smoke dischargers. For each of them, I drilled a hole all the way through each one because they're supposed to be wired. And 
Once those were all done, I installed very small wires into each hole. These three small wires are supposed to run up to waterproof conduit, so I added that third. And with the smoke, smoke dischargers in place, it looks really good. Just a subtle detail that adds more to your model. Now we're going to work on the towing hooks. I'm going to drill them out with my hypodermic needle, and then I'm going to make sure that they're all the way drilled through, but not quite on the other side, so that you can't see it through that side. You just want to be able to drill it so that it sits in a groove in there, but no further. And then all I'm going to do is install a piece of copper wire and trim it to shape. Now all you have to do is take the piece of wire out and reinstall it in the towing hook mounting point. And there you go, they move. So that's a cool little detail to have on there. I always like maximizing the details on my models. It makes it look more interesting. After that, I bent these fenders just a little bit, following with the maximizing detail, and then started texturing the hull. As you can see, I started out with a small brush and did the hard to reach areas and the parts where I had to make sure that I didn't get too much onto the fenders or anything like that. And then afterwards, I went in with a larger brush and finished out all the detail. After that, I'm just going to sand it down so that it uh, takes the ridges out of it and gives it a bit of a modeled look. And that's modeled with a T, not a D. And I'm going to use this pencil to draw impact points where I want to dremel out holes where a shell would have hit. After that, I'm just going to follow those marks I made with a dremel with a grinding tip in it. For a couple of the impacts, they had uh, bolts around them. And so to make a little detail, I cut off the bolt and left, and then drilled out the hole where it was. So it looked like the bolt was blasted off by the explosion. After that, I'm gonna fill each hole with Tamiya basic type and shape each impact with the end of my uh, paintbrush handle. I'm then going to carefully remove the excess putty with an X-Acto knife. Now, off camera, I did add these workable tool clamps from Aber. They're just too hard to film putting together. But as you can see, I just super glued them to model and made them look, uh, makes it look a lot more realistic. And it's kind of fun to have your tools removable. I also did add weld beads because it came a little late for me to show it in a video. Sorry about that. If you do want to see a specific video on those techniques, let me know in the comments section. Also, while you're at it, please give this video a like, and if you liked the video, subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming videos and techniques. I apologize that my audio is so bad in this video, 
but my earbud mic died and so I had to use the computer's mic. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.